Good morning, everyone, and welcome to OpenCV Weekly Webinar, Episode 90, if you can believe that. I am your co-host with the co-most, the second banana who is second to none. I am also your plus one and only, Phil Nelson. I'm here to remind you of a few things we do every single week here on OpenCV Weekly Webinar in a few minutes. But before then, I'd like to introduce our guest host, Anna Petrovicheva, who is known to all of you. Good morning, Anna. Hi, everyone, and thank you, thank you for joining today. Mm -hmm. And we've also got a special guest from the upcoming badminton analysis app, Clutch. We've got Kauri Gunnarsson. Kauri. Great Good pronunciation. Morning. Thanks, Phil. <laughs> I, I didn't have a lot of time to practice. So you got to think on your feet on this show, you know? So yeah. Folks, if you're just joining us for the first time or you need a little reminder, one of the things we do every single week here is a special giveaway to you in the audience. So stay tuned. Later in the episode, I will ask you a trivia question, and the person that answers that trivia question correctly in the Zoom chat will win the OpenCV course of their choosing. You can go to opencv.org slash courses to see what courses are available and pick out your course, or you can just buy one if you find one you really like. Invest in yourself in the new year. We'll also be taking Q&A from you in the audience. So at any time during the show, use the little Zoom Q&A button at the bottom of the screen to ask your question, or just type it into the chat system wherever you're watching, if it's YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, LinkedIn, et cetera. On with the show. Um, our guest this week, as I said, is Kari Gunnarsson, who will be telling us all about the new AI-powered analysis app for badminton. I'm really excited about it. Take it away. Yeah, cool. Great. Uh, yeah, so we're uh, Clutch. Uh, we're based in Barcelona um, and unlocking athletic potential. So a little bit about myself first. Uh, my name is Kauri Gunnarsson. Uh, great pronunciation, Phil. I appreciate that. Um, I'm Icelandic. Flattery uh, will get you everywhere on this show. <laughs> so Icelandic grew up in Denmark, which is a big nation for badminton. And I'm the uh, co-founder and CEO of uh, Clutch. Uh, and for the uh, purposes of this appearance, I think I should uh, highlight that I'm a non-technical co-founder and CEO of Clutch. Um, but I'm very happy to jump in and tell you more about what it is that we're doing. Um, so yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm non-technical, but uh, always had a, a great passion for entrepreneurship and did some uh, work both uh, in investment and uh, innovation uh, before actually playing professional badminton. So prior to COVID, uh, I was playing professional badminton for four years. Uh, I was playing uh, um, yeah, international tournaments. I was traveling all the time. When I was not traveling, I was uh, practicing twice a day, uh, recovering from you know, all the pain uh, when I wasn't tr uh, training. So, but it was a lot of fun. Uh, my highest yeah, I mean, world ranking. That's, that's fascinating. I, I wasn't, uh, so tell us a little bit about the, how that, what's the circuit like for a professional badminton player? Um, it was a pretty, uh, I mean, it's, uh, you have tournaments all over the world. So you have tournaments, um, so a little bit about badminton, maybe badminton is, uh, as I think people uh, typically in the U.S. aren't maybe aware, it's uh, one of the most popular sports in terms of participation in the world. Uh, it's huge in Asia. So like uh, China, I think it's the biggest or the second biggest sport. Uh, India, it's the biggest sport, uh, biggest sport after cricket. So second biggest. Indonesia, it's, the, it's like a religion there. Uh, and Europe, it's, you know, a top 10 sport in many countries. Uh, in Denmark, where I grew up, it's one of the most popular sports. Uh, so I've, I've been playing since I was a kid. Um, played high level as a junior. Uh, you know, went to school, uh, did some work after university. Uh, was still playing at a fairly high level. And then uh, four years prior to COVID, so like 2016, late 2016, I decided that uh, I wanted to try going all out pro. And that means, uh, you know, you're tr training at a, an academy with uh, other professional players. Uh, you're training twice a day and then you're playing all these tournaments and they are, you know, in every corner of the world. So I've played a mm, few times in the US, I've played around South America, I've played in Asia, in Africa, all over Europe. Um, 
and uh, yeah, reached the highest world ranking, my highest world ranking of uh, 123, which is not wow. one of the best, but but still, you know, good enough to have a decent game against against the best players. I mean, uh, out of the entire world, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. There's quite a few people yeah, out here in the I, world. I was never satisfied, but uh, you know, it's uh, when I look back at it, I'm I'm also a little bit proud. You should be. It's a it's an achievement. Thank you. Uh, enough about me. So, uh, what was it that motivated us to build Clutch? Um, yeah. So, I think to start off, uh, a lot of sports, like many of you probably know have had AI and technology in general play a uh, bigger and bigger role. So, you know, there's been the whole money ball revolution of uh, starting in baseball of, uh, you know, data analytics and statistics moving in. Um, and it's something that's, you know, moving into all sports, basically. Uh, racket sports, badminton, tennis, and these sports have been amongst the, the slowest, I think, to uh, take in analytics but it's definitely happening now. Um, so the way that, you know, badminton and, uh, and these sports work is usually you have a coach and the coach might have dozens of players. Uh, and it's hard for that coach to give each player detailed individual attention. Um, and as a player, that means that uh, it might be difficult for you to see, okay, how is it that I should improve? Uh, you know, it, it becomes very subject subjective. Uh, and if you take a typical badminton game, you might have a thousand shots in a game. That's a lot of shots. Uh, and you walk off court and you're like, what actually happened? You might, you know, watch a video of it uh, and you can maybe see some patterns or uh, stuff like that. But it's like, if you want to do manual video and, and data analysis, it, it's super cumbersome. Uh, you have elite teams that do it. Uh, they have uh, professional video analysts that work uh just to do that and even you know with the the manual uh analysis it will take a few hours just to analyze a single game so it's it's not very scalable and then another uh thing that we had noticed that we thought was very interesting was that uh video is uh is moving very rapidly into sport becoming a media that you know everyone is very democratic that you know uh, people are starting to record their own games, even at, a, at an amateur level. Um, they're, they record in practice. Um, and AI can automate a lot of, of that video editing and, and, and production around video, um, which, yeah, we saw as an opportunity. Um, and yeah, this we've is, had, yeah, so if I could, if I could jump in here, we, we've had quite a few um, folks both on the show and in the OpenCV community working on sports with with AI. Just a few weeks ago, we had uh, a first on the show where somebody actually open sourced a new project to track American football plays and turn them from the game film into 2D playbooks with, you know, what players are going where for each play and the analysis of what happened during that play, which is really fascinating stuff. I think, as you, as you said, there's a mm -hmm. lot of low like people just doing this on their own you know with their own stuff and mm -hmm. that, there's a huge opportunity there to make to for those kind of disparate people to to come together and share some of their their learnings and and really kick off the ai revolution for sports i feel for sure um i mean the way that we see the future is that it's just going to be an integral part of playing sport whether you're a professional player or an amateur player, you're going to have video on the court and it's going to provide some sort of value for you, whether that's coaching, you know, analysis or it's content creation. Um, video is going to be a part of the experience when you play a sport. Um, and that's, you know, we're, we're definitely getting uh, pretty far into that, um, which we th think is super exciting. Lots of challenges and I will get to that as well. Uh, we've yeah, also I, had uh you know to go to go back to some more uh, of what we've seen before uh niraj correctly said in the chat here that one of the winners of a previous open cv ai competition was actually a table tennis um tracking app that i think is is has launched now and is and is doing pretty well um before you go on right. i'd like to hear i'd like to hear a little bit uh anna's got so much experience um in 
building out AI and, and CV stuff. I'd really like to hear Anna's thoughts on what, what you've seen, Anna, in sports with uh, the last few years with AI. I mean, first, I want to say that it resonates to me, to, with me so much because I love badminton and I play, play badminton. Obviously, I'm not a professional, but I it's my favorite team like by far. Uh, so huge awesome. kudos for becoming a professional player. And I mean, I'm blown out by, by the like being ranked by like as a 123 uh, is like incredible so i mean <laughs> that, that that's huge appreciate that um, yeah. and i totally can feel like what, what you're saying because like i it, it resonates me with me just so much about not being able to progress because they kind of you don't have a personal trainer right you want to play with multiple people and the trainer cannot cannot just follow everyone what, what what's happening on court um, and yeah, I myself implemented a couple of uh, solutions, including like AI production, like broadcasting solutions and tra tracking what's happening on, on tennis court and uh, basketball right. court and soccer court. And it's really, really changing how people are playing sports, like uh, mm -hmm. especially in professional, on professional level. So I can say that I totally see a huge wave of these, you know, new technologies coming into sports and really changing the way that people kind of uh, hone their skills in very kind of minor, minor details. Yeah. I would love to ask you questions about that later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Probably we should uh, talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah. So this is sort of like the, the reason why we're doing this now as as i mentioned um so uh what we think is is super exciting is that this is becoming um available to consumers it's not just at this enterprise level um which you know when ai started playing a role in sports it was more of an enterprise level uh, thing where you know, you have these big, heavy systems that are in the arenas with multiple cameras, but now you can do it from a single camera. You can put it in an iPhone um, and that facilitates a new experience. Um, and the parallel that, that we draw is sort of what GPS did for endurance sports uh, around a decade ago. So you have companies like Strava, obviously that built for runners and bikers and leverage this new technology that was all of a sudden uh, available to regular people in their devices. Um, and that's, it's also something that uh, consumers have been, uh, you know, accustomed to in, in recent years is, uh, is this data driven behavior, um, you know, at a professional sports level everyone is now doing video analysis. That's, that's a given. Uh, but even at the, you know, normal people, uh, this sort of idea of the quantified self is becoming more mainstream. Uh, people have all these, you know, gadgets that tell them about their sleep and about their, uh, activities, uh, about their blood glucose, uh, and what have you. So yeah, what is, what is clutch? Um, as you might have guessed, uh, it's AI powered video analysis for badminton. Um, and all you need is a smartphone. And as you see here, uh, something to record with. Um, so this is a tripod. And this is actually at um, a badminton academy in Fremont in California. Nice. Yeah, just a little bit uh, south of here. Yeah, it's actually the biggest uh, badminton place I've seen in my life. They have 27 courts in like a, a refurbished warehouse. So we offer uh, tools for personal improvement, uh, content creation, and social infrastructure. So we have teams in the app that where you have, you know, your coach that can share analysis directly with their players. Um, and yeah, I'll show some more product slides later, but let's look at what the AI actually looks like and what it does. Uh, I'm probably the, the least technical person on this call. So I will just, you know, tell you about what it is that we're tracking. So we have different tracking modules here. We have, you know, tracking the court, obviously, uh, the shuttle or the ball, um, and the players, 
uh, player position on the court, which is marked by the pink dot here. Um, and then we have, uh, you know, event detection, which is the, the shot here, um, the handle, whether it's a forehand or a backhand. It's very granular. Wow. So we have, yeah, that's, uh, we're that's really impressive. I, I didn't actually expect to have this, this level of detail. It's wow. Yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy. Um, I mean, for me, some of it seems like black magic. Uh, <laughs> and I just think it's super awesome. Um, but it's, it's pretty, pretty impressive. So, I mean, pressure, we're, we measure the pressure level of the, of the players and it's based on body pose. Um, in badminton, it's, uh, you know, if you're reaching it close to the floor, uh, you're typically under a lot of pressure if you're lunging. If you're, you know, uh, upright, then you're uh, pretty offensive usually. And then the, we track the trajectory of the shuttle. Um, this is what it looks like. This is from the Olympic final uh, last year. Wow, very cool. And the, the winning moment. Um, yeah, setting the stage a little bit about uh, what the environment looked like uh, which is what is I think interesting from a computer vision perspective uh, as you see here are, are a couple of examples of uh, badminton gyms um, the first one the, the one on top is uh, in Fremont uh, and then you have uh, at the bottom one in Denmark where I have played a lot uh, so it's tight spaces you have many courts that are close to each other um, it's a relatively small court, uh, 13 meters by six. Uh, I hope uh, most of you are okay with uh, the metric system. Um, but I, I think probably most like- Most computer uh, vision folks are, yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. Uh, and you have a lot of, so in badminton, people play on the court uh, as opposed to tennis where the, the players are often uh, times outside of the court. So you have a lot of people movement uh, around the courts and often very close to the court um, and like obscuring parts of the court as well then yeah the, mm -hmm. the smallness it's an interesting problem I, I see now that the you know it's a smaller space there's going to be a lot of obfuscation by the both the players and and the you know based on where you have the camera it seems like it matters a lot as well so yeah really mm -hmm. rich rich problem domain here 100 percent uh yeah so what are the main challenges in 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 a B2C computer vision product. Um, I mean, we rely on uh, users to input uh, their own recording. Uh, and obviously there are limitations to what we can track. Um, and uh, a perfect recording angle is not easy as you may have seen in the spaces that uh, we're operating in. There's a lot of noise uh, from the environment. Uh, occlusion between players, uh, you have partial courts, you can have multiple courts in, in view. Um, and here are a few examples. This is actually uh, myself playing here. Um, you see it's like a, a low angle. There's a, like a lot of occlusion on the other side. Like this shot, you wouldn't even, even see it um, in the frame. Yeah. There's also a little bit of shaking. Uh, you know, it's wooden floors, you have, it's shaking. Uh, yeah, the the lights are a little bit uh, yeah googly there. Yeah, the the shuttle is is super fast, so you get a ton of motion blur if you have light. And, and, it, it and it's tiny blow. as well. It's just such a small thing to have to to track as well. Yeah, exactly. I think shuttlecock uh, is the fastest moving. Uh, am I right? I think it's like four hundred sixty kilometers per hour or something is the maximum speed of shuttlecock, which is the biggest across. Almost all the sports, as far as I remember. What about yeah. like high lie? I feel like high lie would be pretty fast. Which one? <clears throat> high lie, you know that one. I actually They're like don't. lacrosse. I mean, they they whip those right. lacrosse balls around too. So the so thing I'm, with I'm the, sure that yeah, the aerodynamics of of the shuttle and badminton is, I mean, when you upon impact it goes super fast and it slows down. Uh, but like upon impact, you have insane speed so like those are the i'm not even sure like i think three four hundred kilometers an hour 
You yeah, you're, I, I just I just looked it up. Anna, you're exactly correct. 493 kilometers per hour when at the at the moment of impact. That is bananas. Yeah. I don't know why I remember all that, but yeah. It's, it's pretty impressive. Time. So here you have a, a couple of other examples. You have like, you know, you're recording this court. It's a partial uh, court. You have a lot of key points that are missing. Uh, you have a lot of spectators, people around the court. Uh, and very close. You also have a view of another court. So you might have, you know, uh, someone playing on the court uh, and you both see the shots and, and the shuttle. So it might, you know, the tracker might latch on to something that's not in the court. I know all of these problems, we've solved a lot of them, uh, but I, I wouldn't be able to explain very well how we have done that. For that, uh, we need to get uh, my co-founder on here uh, for another show uh yeah we'll have to we'll have to have them on sometime yeah and here you have like uh so these are clear uh courts uh pure badminton here you have a multi-sports gym with intersecting lines from from other courts your spectators moving uh in front of the camera um yeah and just like a quick example of, of, of something that might look perfect. This, uh, I mean, this a clear view of everything. But it, this is not very feasible in, in most um, in most gyms. Yeah, I mean, that, that camera's up pretty high. It's a very fast, yeah. very high quality, you know, camera. Like it's probably, exactly. thing probably cost $100,000 or something. That was actually just my iPhone recording. Oh, really? It was, it was, yeah. Wow, <laughs> man, the, the cameras stand. have gotten so amazing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so talking a little bit about the onboarding, uh, which is more of a product design uh, user experience type of uh, issue, but I think it's interesting uh, also for computer vision because, or, you know, a, a consumer product like this where people are inputting uh, the data that needs to be processed. So uh, this is something that we think a lot about, and this is, um, you know, what we have now. These are actual animations, so you won't see that. Uh, but just trying to, you know, get people to uh, produce good image or good video. So it's about, you know, getting a certain height. It's about, you know, having as much of the court in view as possible uh, and making sure that, you know, you have a steady angle uh using a tripod or or a wall mount uh this is a so this is so in in the app you can both record a match directly in the app or you can upload a match that you have previously recorded uh and this is just you know some behavioral things that we're uh, uh trying to uh play with to to uh in order to uh maximize the chances that 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 people upload uh you know good quality video and, and therefore have a good experience with the product. So yeah, um, this, this sort of app, I, I've done a bunch of this kind of work in my career of, of building flows for apps and, you know, various mm -hmm. tools. Like what, what, um, what sort of tools does your team use internally to, to build out and, and sort of test these kind of things before you, you implement them into an app? Uh, I mean, this is all designed in, in, in Figma and then we have, you know, uh, we prototype it, we, uh, we try it out with uh, some of our users. Uh, mm -hmm. At this early stage that we're at, you know, we have very close relationships with many of the teams that, uh, so we're in test flight right now, we're about to launch in the App Store. Um, but we have uh, a bunch of teams, including many of the best professional teams using the app. Uh, and then we, you know, test the prototypes with them, the flows, um, and and yeah, see see the the feedback that we get before actually building it. Um, yeah, do do you use um do you use like uh, sort of storyboard type prototyping where you'll you'll build out the screens in Figma or Sketch or whatever app, and then just kind of you know have someone tap through them to see what it what it feels like before you build out things, or do you? go more quickly into you know implementation and testing based on you know on your on your actual apps uh usually we will sketch out a few ideas and just do it in figma which is uh i mean it's so quick uh and you can prototype it in figma as well and then you can you can show it to people it's it's actually a like figma is an amazing tool 
Yeah, uh, and it's, you can mirror stuff on your, I've used it a bunch where you can just like mirror yeah. stuff onto your device screen and then, you know, tap and then the thing pops up and close it. And it, it takes a lot of the, the- You don't have to go and build it and then, you know- Building uh, and deploying you know, okay, is- that didn't work, yeah. Yeah, the round trip on iPhone apps is still very long when you're building and deploying to the device. And so cutting that out with these, uh, with like Figma, Sketch, et cetera, really- closes that gap to and takes something that takes five minutes and you know makes it make five seconds which is a huge savings yeah yeah so this is also i mean it's about educating people a little bit about what is good quality video because what uh you know you might naturally record what as as a human might feel like, like this looked like a decent recording it's not necessarily the same thing as what the the computer vision uh, tracking will will think is is great. Um, so this is also yeah. just about yeah communicating what is it that will provide uh, you with the optimal experience and the uh, the most uh, the best accuracy possible. Mm -hmm. So yeah, some of the things that we have done and achieved is um, I mean we do automated scoring. Um, there's a lot of issues around that. So like. Uh, when people go on court, they they usually, uh, you know, when people go on court, they will warm up um, and distinguishing between that moment of, okay, when do we switch from warming up to actually playing a game? Um, that, that's uh, non-trivial, trivial. And that's something that we, we do pretty well. And the granular, granularity of, uh, of shot detection. So we have 13 different shots and Oftentimes they will look very much the same. So, like, uh, uh, if someone is fam familiar with uh, with the terminology of of shots, you might have a smash, which is from the backcourt, and you know, a very hard shot downwards. Uh, or you might have a drop, which you know, the way that you do it looks the same, but it's more about the trajectory of the shuttle. Um, and yeah, so we do a lot of granular shot detection. Uh, temporal precision in, in detection. So, uh, you know, oftentimes within one or two frames of, you know, impact with the shuttle. Um, port detection in, in diverse environments. So even if the full court isn't in view, if you have a bunch of intersecting lines, um, we do pretty well. So this is, uh, yeah, some, some product screens, this, the analytics that you, that you currently get, uh, so you have um, you know automated tra uh, score tracking, you know time in play versus the match time, um, how many winners and errors you make, um, and then you have some very detailed uh, shot statistics here, uh, where you can tap into the different areas of the court and see different shot patterns uh, in those yeah, I mean, zones. This, this is real, real deep sports analytics. I'm, I'm very impressed. Yeah, this is, uh, yeah, it's pretty, pretty deep. And that, that, and that the video also editing. highlight reel. Yeah, automated highlight reel. That is sick as hell. Yeah, it, that's, that's awesome. Uh, and it's super easy. I mean, you, you uh, track your match, then you basically just press a button, like what, what highlight do you want? Uh, so like the clutch highlight is, uh, it's just a, a match highlight. So we have uh, a formula for uh, what constitutes great, uh, great rallies, great points. Um, so we just put together a highlight reel of the game. Uh, or you can, you know, choose specific shots. You want to see all your smashes or all your serves. Uh, you just tap it and then it creates a new video with uh, just those instances. Um, and it's all shareable. You can share it uh, with your team or um, to the network, or you can share it out of the app as well. That's fascinating. Do, uh, do you are you a Mario Kart player by chance? It no, makes me think I'm, of I'm not. Mar Mario Kart does this in in the matches as well, where at the end of a, a round, uh, you know, it's usually three three laps at the end of a game of Mario Kart. It'll create a little highlight reel of what happened during that uh, race, oh. and that's what that's what made me think of that here. Interesting, cool. I'll have to check that out. Um, yes, yeah, just to to finish off, like what's uh, what's next for us? 
So right now we do cloud processing of, of everything, uh, which is from a product perspective, there is some, you know, friction around it. You uh, record your match and you upload it, you wait for it to be processed. Uh, then you receive a notification when it's processed. It, I mean, it's, it's pretty quick. Um, so we do, uh, I mean, in the cloud, we do faster than real-time processing. So if you have a match that's one hour, it might take us 45 minutes to process it. Um, but you know that immediacy of of having undeviced processing, uh, it's a big challenge. Uh, we know that, uh, but we want to start moving more of the algorithms to the device. Yeah, it's, it's, it seems like it's not the devices are obviously fast enough, but it's more about this long term. You know, it's a lot. There's a long time. It's a lot of video to process for matches that may you know take an hour versus. Mm -hmm. An Instagram clip that's 30 seconds, it's, it's, it's a much different problem for on-device processing when you've got something so big. 100%, yeah. Um, but so our strategy is like we have, uh, we know that not everyone is, um, is, you know, would be happy with the level of friction that cloud processing provides. Uh, but the most competitive players uh, and they can be, you know, professional players, but also a lot of amateur players are, you know, have that mindset of, of being into uh, self-improvement and want to understand their game. And, you know, they want to be better than uh, uh, better each time they go on court. If you have that mindset, then I think uh, this is already something for you. But, you know, to get to everyone, you know, we need this, the faster processing and, and uh, that immediacy. Um, uh, expanding the platform, that's, that's another thing. We're actually hiring an Android developer now, so, uh, or looking for one. Um, so if anyone is an Android developer by chance, then reach out to me. Um, What's the best place for them to, to find, um, where should they send their applications? Uh, here, this email. Kadi at clutchapp.io. It's easy to find us. Uh, I should put our Instagram and stuff handle as well. That's the clutch app at the clutch app is on all social media. So yeah, expand awesome. to other sports might also, you know, be uh, something very interesting for us. Uh, there are a lot of sports that, you know, in every sense, basically uh, are very similar to badminton. Tennis would, would be an obvious sport for us. Um, pickleball throwing uh, amazingly in the US, uh, which is literally played on a badminton court. Uh, they lower the net and it look, I mean, it's a little different, but, um, and paddle is at least in Europe also uh, uh, immensely growing sport. Yeah, pickleball has uh, gotten really popular among the, the the 40 year old set, it seems like. I've seen a lot of, a lot of folks in my friend group um, talking about pickleball. I had never heard of it before. I had no idea what it was. I hadn't heard about it until maybe a year and a half ago. Uh, yeah, same. And then, you know, LeBron and Tom Brady and all these uh, big sports stars, they, they go and buy pickleball teams. Um, yeah. So that's pretty interesting. Yeah, it used to be they bought soccer teams. Now it's uh, yeah. <laughs> pickleball. I guess pickleball teams might be a little cheaper and, you know, yeah. maybe, maybe will rise in value. Yeah, maybe a better, a stronger investment. <laughs> yeah, good return on investment on that. So, and the last thing would be expand the use case beyond matches. Um, so right now we track matches. A lot of times when people uh, go on court, it's, you know, they're doing training exercises and, and stuff like that. So we want to uh, be able to support that as well. And yeah, that's, that's it for me. Awesome. Yeah, thanks. Uh... Thanks for this presentation. That's really, really fascinating work. I, I'm, we're, my mind is reeling with questions. I think, um, yeah, uh, thoughts, Anna, would, would you like to kick off our, our Q&A here just with some thoughts on, on what you've seen here? I mean, I just wanted to say huge kudos about how deep and kind of, you know, thoughtful and caring these analytics is that you know, to build because, I mean, uh, as I said, like a lot of people are moving into this field of anal uh, sports analytics and helping the player, but I feel mm -hmm. like like Clutch has this like super personal touch to it, which which I super love. So yeah, um, appreciate that. I mean, 
that that looks great. I, I wanted to talk just a bit, like if you if you wanted to share who uses Clutch and uh, I mean what 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 are the thoughts of the users? How many of them are using the, the app actively? How is it growing? Uh, if you wanted to talk about this, I think it would be very very interesting. Mm -hmm. So I mean, we started uh, we started the uh, like beta testing. Uh, in April last year, early April, and that was with uh, with national teams, um, so professional teams, um, and then we opened up access to more teams and 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 also individual players uh, that could sign up through us. Uh, and now we have, uh, I mean, several uh, national teams, including top ten players, some of the best coaches in the world, uh, from. Both Europe, Asia, uh, Australia, uh, different parts of the world, and uh, in, and then we have also expanded the user base to include amateur level players, you know, club level that might you know only play a few times a week, uh, but still have that mindset of of being interested in in data and 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 video and uh, and those are based everywhere. We have I think we have users on on every continent um it's it's still been a closed beta um so it, it will be interesting to uh, when we launch uh in a few weeks we have you know uh we're working with some some uh, professional players um in uh in taking this to market so that's uh we're very excited about that yeah, well, that's imagine. an incredible feeling to have someone use your application all over the world. That's incredible. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty exciting. It, uh, yeah, the 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 technological complexity of all the systems is also something that that's uh, a bit daunting, uh, but it it seems to work most cases. Yeah, I can imagine that's uh, in infrastructure wise, it's you, right. like you've described a lot of interesting problems to solve infrastructure wise, for sure, especially because the videos like we were discussing, these videos are so much longer than the kind of standard commodity where Instagram or Facebook or even YouTube, you're, you're mostly not uploading stuff that's over half an hour long for the most part. And this is these are much bigger chunks of video with a lot of a lot of stuff going on in there. Um, I hate to be that guy, but what are your plans for monetization? Uh, I mean, it's actually been a monetized uh, beta, so we have uh, we have only paying users. Um, and Hell it's, yeah, uh, it's, it's awesome. Such, <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, you you gotta you gotta earn a living somehow, uh, and and I think it's also a good way to test that you know uh, we're actually bringing value to people. Uh, people are willing to pay for it. Uh, but it's it's a you know subscription based model. Uh, so we have individual uh, individual subscriptions where you um, wh where you can sign up monthly or or yearly, or you can sign up as a team uh, where you get you know more access to uh, video credits, uploading video. Interesting. Yeah, that that makes a lot of sense. Um, what. Uh... I don't. I don't think you mentioned so far, but how many users are we talking? Like on a on a weekly basis, for example, how many people are using Clutch today before your 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 big launch? Uh, we're pushing a thousand right now, so very excited to go over that uh, that milestone. Yeah, that's a serious number. I mean, that's yeah. Wow, uh, seems like you're ready. <laughs> um, uh, we've got a couple of questions here from from the Peanut Gallery. Um, yeah, uh, Stanley would like to know, you, you briefly uh, touched on this in the presentation, but Stanley would like to know, um, what do you see as the big issues in adapting this to other sports like table tennis or or even, you know, just regular old tennis? Mm, I think uh, I think my co-founder would, uh, would definitely be a better, uh, you know, authority on that. Um, but I, that said, I, I think, uh, for instance, tennis, uh, you have a lot of uh, uh, a lot of the stuff that we have built can be uh, reused, uh, court detection, player detection, even, I mean, we've just, uh, we play weekly tennis matches uh, with the team um, and uh, we've tried tracking it and, and it, it does, you know, detect the serve uh, of a tennis, a tennis serve. 
so there's a lot of similarity between the sports. There are uh, like some logic that's built into the sport uh, that needs to be uh, converted, uh, like different heuristics that would work in badminton, but not in tennis. Uh, yeah, logic of, for instance, the ball bounces in tennis, it does, doesn't do that in badminton. People oftentimes play outside the court and in tennis, they would not do that in, in badminton. Um, but overall, I, I we're pretty confident that, you know, it is, uh, of course, not a trivial task, but it's, it's, it's very doable within, uh, uh, not, uh, an insurmountable amount of time to, to convert what we have into, for instance, tennis. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that makes that makes a lot of sense to me. So you you mentioned that uh, launch was was imminent. Uh, what's the what's the plan for launch for clutch to the to the wider world? Um, so we have uh, you know working on a few partnerships, or we have a few a few partnerships that aren't official yet, uh, but with uh, with professional players, um, and so just yeah, marketing with them showing them the, the value that we're bringing to them uh, currently uh, and just, you know, start uh, talking more about what it is that we're doing. Um, and then we're also looking into, into more partnerships with uh, some of the organizations in the sport. We already have uh, partnerships with many national federations that, you know, uh, where the national teams reside. So that's, you know, a lot of them can, can, we can go through them to the sort of the club structures of the sport. Um, so I think we're, we're in a good position to, to grow it out. And then, yeah, betting more on, on, on social media and, 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 and all that. We haven't uh, been super active there, but uh, you should still follow us uh, at the clutch app. Um, Oh yeah, we'll that's, that's... We'll, uh, we'll put those links in the show notes for uh, when we put this up on YouTube. Um, that's awesome. Yeah, Anna, you're you're quiet over there. Thoughts thoughts on uh, the, what we've been discussing here with regards to you know launching, and I'm I'm really amazed they've got a thousand. They're putting pushing a thousand people here already. I mean that's that's huge. That's actually a thousand teams, right? So like it's probably a person uses that for like multiple people in the room. Mm. My guess and, is yeah. In, in in some cases it is. Uh, mm -hmm. So I mean, it, in in that sense, it's it's. Uh, I mean, we have teams where you know a coach somewhere is using it with uh, with all their players, uh, and we would count that as one user. Um, but uh, and also a challenge with the sort of team structure that uh, people usually play uh, or practice under is um, is that, you know, a lot of players will have Android phones and, and we are an iOS app now. So that is something that impedes, uh, can, can impede um, adoption for a whole team. Uh, but we do have a lot of, uh, you know, coaches that use, use the app for, for multiple players. Um, that's true. So yeah, it's even bigger. It's 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 really really cool. Just like the I, I I was trying to think about the amount of infrastructure things that you have to build to do that, and it's it's really impressive. And yeah, uh, I totally I totally agree that the move to uh, like the device iPhones Android applications it's like imminent. I mean not applications but processing on the phones is imminent because it's not only kind of it's not only something that can give you the feedback immediately, but it also, um, it's actually simpler, like in terms of like, it's, it's easier in terms of the infrastructure, right? It, mm -hmm. You have this kind of thing that just does all the job for you and you don't have to send the data backward, backwards and everything. Yeah, exactly. uh, and it also, it also serves like, it, it also saves the uh, server costs, right? And also saves down yeah. the energy that is being, uh, which is which is good for climate, right? So I think that it's it's a it's a big move, and um, like I, I have done that several times in my life when there was already a working solution on the servers, and you had to move it to to the phones. It's actually in most cases it's um, easier than you think. So I totally think that you will be successful down this path. Awesome! That's uh, that's encouraging. I like that. 
Yes, Anna has a very deep experience with on-device processing. For example, um, you can uh, check out modelplace.ai frameworks, which you can run on your iOS device for um, various AI-powered tasks. You can find that. What, what's the URL for that again, Anna? It's simple. It's modelplace.ai. Modelplace.ai. Mm -hmm. And go check that out. There's there's free models on there as well to run on, uh, you know, various devices. OpenCV AI Kit, for example, um, but also things uh, newly added frameworks for iOS development. So uh, check that out. We ho <clears throat> hope you do and hope you enjoy it. Um, I'm going to do our giveaway here. As we're about <clears throat> ten minutes to the hour. Um, if you are just joining us for the first time or you need a reminder, one of the things we do every single week here on OpenCV Weekly Webinar is give away something to you in the audience. You will be able to win the OpenCV course of your choosing by being the first person to answer the trivia question I'm about to ask in the Zoom chat. Get ready to answer. If you have won in the last two months, please do not answer and give other people a chance to win. This is going to be a two-parter because y'all have been getting too fast. Um, our illustrious guest was a world-ranked badminton player. What was the highest ranking he achieved? And the second part of this question, there was a video from a Southern California city earlier in the presentation. What Southern California city was that? Ooh, we got one. Wow, that was, y'all were trying to answer super early. You all got the 123, you're on to me with the numbers. I had to throw you a curveball here. It looks like uh, the first person to answer correctly, which was ranking 123 and Fremont, California. Um, that would be, who was the first person? Man, y'all are quick on this. That was uh, Rah Rahul. Rahul. Um, congratulations, Rahul. Please send one email to phil at opencv.org with the course you would like. You can see what courses are available at opencv.org slash courses. Um, got a couple more questions here from folks. Uh, they seem to be really interested in the uh, detection. There's some really granular detection in this app, and I find that to be very fascinating as well. Like, I know you're you're uh, the sort of the non-technical co-founder, but how can you can you talk a little bit about the difficulties in, say, detecting a backhand versus a forehand, or de uh, detecting when the player is in control or under pressure? Like that's that's really uh, interesting stuff. That uh, it, it kind of blows my mind that you're able to to detect that. Mm, yeah, uh, maybe I share my screen real quick again to go back to the video. So pressure would be on uh, based on on player uh, or like body pose. So this would be, um, I mean, it's, it's it's you know it's a ton of manual tagging of of, what, of different pressure levels. Um, so uh, you know this is uh, he's doing a, a an offensive uh, shot here. Um, he's in like a, you know controlled body pose upright. This guy is, is lunging, taking it close to the floor. Um, so he will be uh, in defensive mode. And yeah, so uh, it, it's, it's based on that, like, uh, how, like how high are you reaching this shuttle? Are you like taking it up here? Or are you taking it close to the floor? Um, so it's, yeah, body pose. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to take in a lot of, you have to, synthesize a lot of uh different data input to figure this stuff yeah out. Uh, for instance if uh, like if we were doing tennis and we wanted to do this in tennis i think i mean we would definitely need to like retrain those models because uh like pressure in tennis i think may maybe some of it will be transferable but there's definitely also some some differences in in the way that it, it just looks uh, i mean tennis is more I mean, you, you play lower, whereas in badminton, you have, uh, you have more space uh, uh, above as well. Um, it's like tennis is a flatter game. Um, as, as for the detection of, of uh, forehand, backhand, 
I think uh, I would have to uh, double check that with uh, with Eric, my co-founder, before I I start trying to uh, give an explanation of it. Yeah, that's that's totally fine. Again, we'll I guess we'll just have to have uh, a more technical discussion should, on a future episode of Open CV. Definitely Weekly. should, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So uh, we can do a couple more questions here from the from the audience. Um, there's uh, there were a few questions. Uh, Eric actually just posted something I was going to ask here in the in the Zoom chat, which is, um, are, are you using any off the shelf models for things like like say pose estimation, for example? There's a lot of really good ones out there, um, and so are you just kind of using some of those tools that are just already pre built, and then bringing your special you know kind of special sauce, which is the data, which is the deep understanding of the sport. Or are, are the majority of the models you're using sort of built in house? Uh, I think it's a it's a mix. I mean, there's definitely you know uh, uh, there off the shelf models for you know uh, player detection and and stuff like that. We use, uh, of course, like stuff like YOLO and, and and stuff like that. That's not built by us, uh, but a lot of it is then um, you know. Uh, uh, special knowledge of 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 the game and uh, that is um that is baked into the system we've had a uh, very close uh i mean both eric my co-founder is also a badminton player before he became a uh, an ai engineer he uh, or a computer vision engineer he he, he was playing uh, a decent game um and uh, so awesome. yeah we have we have uh we're all racket sports players actually uh, on the team, either tennis or, or badminton. Um, that's great. And, so it's uh, really it's really deep in the team. That's that's yeah, uh, awesome. Yeah, so we have we have some fun games uh, every week, um, and uh, we've also had like very close relationship to really top tier coaches uh, throughout our entire product uh, development. So. Uh, We've always gotten very good feedback as even in the sort of annotation phase of uh, of uh, building this. Um, you know, it can be small details as, uh, for instance, the pressure detection. Uh, so just validating it with with more people than just us saying this is you know offense, this is defense. Yeah, that that makes a lot of sense. Um, I think you can feel it. I think it, it 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 actually answers my question. How do you build something that you actually can feel kind of personal touch in? Mm -hmm. uh, the fact yeah. that you, your whole team is built from uh, racket sports players actually answers this very well. Yeah, agreed. Um, really, really fascinating stuff. Um, yes. Uh, so I've got one more question for me here um, as we're as we're button up against the hour, which is. Uh, I'm I'm a big fan of Major League Baseball, specifically the game of baseball. Major League Baseball, I'm less of a fan of these days because they keep making changes to make the game worse, especially on the <laughs> minor on the, on the minor league level where they're doing stuff like you know testing out uh, sort of AI umpires and things like this, which I absolutely hate. I think cheating is an important part of the game. <laughs> I think. <laughs> I think uh, I I believe as uh, the the great former governor of Minnesota Jesse the Body Ventura used to say it's not cheating unless you get caught, and the, <laughs> the the game the game of baseball specifically and and all all professional sports I believe like that's where almost all of the great sports stories come from is somebody just getting one over on the referee like you know if you look at the Baseball Hall of Fame it's shot through with players that, you know, openly famously cheated like uh, goose gossage, you know, guys putting, putting Vaseline on the ball and things like that. Um, <laughs> what, what is, uh, are, are you getting any pushback? Uh, or have you gotten any pushback from, from some maybe traditionalist folks in badminton that are like, I really don't want this AI stuff anywhere near the sport. Um, I mean, we're not really like, uh, I don't think there is uh, anything that would corresp correspond to uh, what you can do in baseball. It, I mean, you have line judges. Uh, you're not calling the lines yourself in in most cases. Um, you're saying it's a little bit been, harder. It's a little bit harder to cheat. It's hard. Uh, yeah, it's harder to cheat. Uh, I mean, uh, unless you do something, you know, uh, like. Uh, 
put something in the in, in the morning coffee of of your opponent. Uh, yeah, they're, or or mess with yeah. their equipment. There's a, the famous story from the <laughs> not to get too deep in the weeds on baseball, but there's a famous story from the '90s where one of the pitchers. So one of the one of the players hit a home run. They were accused of having cork in their bat. If you, it's against the rules to have cork in your baseball bat. It makes right. the ball go farther. It's just not a, you're not allowed to do it. But it still happens all the time. Um, this player, uh, that the, was the Cleveland Indians at the time. They're now the Cleveland Guardians. Um, they actually had one of the pitchers climb up in the ductwork, like an action movie <laughs> and get, get into the uh referees or the uh, umpires uh place where they had sequestered the bat and replace it with a non-corked bat <laughs> this really happened it's an actual story look it up um, no, that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty epic uh yeah. i can't think of anything like that in in badminton but you know of course there are people that are more reactionary towards uh new things and new technology moving moving in like when I told my my old coach that I was doing this, uh, I think his first reaction was uh, like uh, half jokingly or or maybe entirely jokingly. He said, "Like, uh, are you trying to replace me?" Yeah, Which exactly. Is, of course, the, <laughs> the typical automation question. Um, I don't think we're anywhere near that. I think it's just as much a tool for that empowers coaches. Um, but um, yeah, they're 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 of course, people that are set in their old ways and, and don't want to adopt something new. And, and that's just the nature of, of innovation, I think. Yeah, that, that's true. Um, we're, we're butting up against 10 o'clock here. Like uh, any, any final thoughts from you, Anna? I mean, it's so cool to see a new technology just, you know, uh, finding its way through, through smaller clubs and bigger clubs and national teams. Uh, I just want to wish you luck on this journey. Thank you so much. Yes, and uh, thank you so much, everybody out there for joining us. We wouldn't be doing these shows if you didn't watch them. Thanks so much to our guest this week. Thanks to my guest host, Anna. Um, in case you're wondering out there, Dr. Satya Malik's got a little bit of a sore throat, so he's out today. We'll be back next week, where our guests next week, same bat time, same bat channel, 9 a.m. Thursday, will be Team Recycling Rush, one of the winners of OpenCV AI Competition 2022. It's a fascinating project using AI to try to clean up lakes and rivers. Um, one of our favorite projects from the show, which you can look in the show archives from a couple of weeks ago to get a quick view of their winning video, but we will have them on for a full episode next week. Take care of yourselves out there, folks. Take care of somebody else if you can and have a great day wherever you may be. Thanks so much for watching this episode of the webinar. Please hit that like button, subscribe, and don't forget to tap the little bell icon to be notified when new episodes drop. This week's episode was brought to you by OpenCV Courses. Learn computer vision and AI from the best at opencv.org slash courses. If you'd like to be in the audience next week, subscribe to the OpenCV newsletter.